Hi, I'm Dr. Jack West, medical oncologist in Seattle, Washington. For patients with advanced non-small cell lung cancer that harbors an activating EGFR mutation, one of the leading questions in late 2017 as we enter into 2018 is whether we should lead with the third generation EGFR inhibitor osimertinib or save this agent as a second line agent uh, against EGFR and start with a different EGFR inhibitor. So just to back up a bit, uh, osimertinib, also known as Tegriso, is a third generation EGFR inhibitor that has been FDA approved for a couple of years as a second line treatment for EGFR mutation positive patients who progress on a first or second generation EGFR inhibitor and then have the acquired resistance mutation T790M detected in either a biopsy bit of tissue or uh, plasma at the time of disease progression on another EGFR inhibitor. Now, T790M is the most common mechanism of acquired resistance. It's seen in about 50 to 60% of patients uh, who develop acquired resistance, typically occurring uh, many months, like 10, 11, 12 months or more, after, uh, as a median, after a patient starts on an EGFR inhibitor. So this means that while 50 to 60% of patients will have this mutation detected, that also means that 40 to 50% of patients with progression do not have it. And this uh, option of osimertinib is not approved or readily available or clearly active for the patients who don't have T790M. So uh, osimertinib is definitely an attractive option in the second line setting for patients eligible to receive it, but that's not everybody. And not only is it only 50 to 60% of patients who actually have T790M, in uh, healthcare systems all over the world, the testing rates for T790M is only uh, topping out at 60 or 70 percent. So that means that we aren't actually detecting all the people who have this and really only a minority of patients with an EGFR mutation get their opportunity with osimertinib. Now, osimertinib is likely to become a first-line treatment option and even an arguable standard of care based on the results of the FLORA trial. The FLORA trial was presented by Dr. Suresh Ramalingam at ESMO 2017 and recently published in the New England Journal of Medicine in late 2017 and demonstrated a significant improvement in progression-free survival with first-line osimertinib compared to first-line gefitinib or erlotinib in EGFR mutation positive patients. Now, uh, this, when I say significant difference, is not just statistical significance, but a, I would say, very clinically significant improvement as well. Specifically, the hazard ratio for progression-free survival was 0.46, and that means that there's an over 50% improvement in progression-free survival. In absolute terms, the median progression-free survival was 18.9 months, nearly 19 months, with osimertinib versus 10.2 months with gefitinib or erlotinib. And uh, there was a strong trend toward improved overall survival with osimertinib as well. It did not meet statistical significance uh, because of a correction for statistical issues of testing early, and these are still very immature results with only 25% of the survival data reported. But uh, the hazard ratio was 0.63 favoring osimertinib, which is certainly a provocative difference suggesting a potential survival benefit with osimertinib, even if it's not irrefutable and statistically significant at this time. So what? So uh, the fact is that there are certainly people who argue that it will be better to save osimertinib as a, as a second line option because if you progress on uh, a fatinib or erlotinib or even uh, another agent like dacamitinib that I talk about in another uh, discussion, another uh, recording, 
you can still have T790M positive disease and then get the benefit of osimertinib on top of that. Uh, so that is certainly a reasonable argument to make, to have something in your back pocket. And I've just recently had some discussions with several of my patients who really value the idea of having a backup plan. And the question being, if you start with osimertinib, what can you do next? So I think that's a, a fair question, and I don't think that there's a clear, absolute right answer for everyone. That said, I would say that my preference is to start with osimertinib uh, for a, a couple of reasons. First, the tolerability of osimertinib, com uh, particularly compared to a second generation EGFR TKI like afatinib or dacamitinib, which may become commercially available as an option. And if afatinib and dacamitinib may be favored because they have somewhat greater efficacy than the first generation EGFR TKIs tested in the FLORA study, uh, I would note that the tolerability of afatinib and dacamitinib is a real challenge uh, overall particularly when you're talking about a therapy that we want people to be on for a year or years, even grade two, diarrhea, uh, persistent rash, dry skin itching, uh, mouth sores, these are all issues that are manageable perhaps, but real challenges for people who are trying to live their lives on a longitudinal therapy. And I think that if osimertinib has the potential to give uh, at least as good, if not superior, efficacy and better tolerability, that's a big issue. Another is that we really don't have a good sense of the efficacy in terms of intracranial activity of second generation EGFR inhibitors like afatinib or dacamitinib. And, and we have some sense that erlotinib and jafitinib is, is not as strong as osimertinib. So I would argue that the better intracranial control is a clear factor that would lead me to favor osimertinib for patients. Now, the third issue is the trend toward better uh, survival. And it's fair to say the data are immature and it's not a statistically significant difference uh, favoring osimertinib in the FLORA trial. However, the trend and the hazard ratio of 0.63 certainly doesn't dissuade me from favoring it. And I would underscore that if you start with osimertinib, 100% of patients will get the benefit of receiving osimertinib over the course of their life. On the other hand, if you start with another agent, even if 50 to 60% progress and uh, and we could detect all of those patients with T790M, that leaves 40 or 50% of patients with a median progression-free survival that is clearly less than the 19 months we would expect with osimertinib. And uh, that 40 to 50% will not get the benefit of uh, osimertinib. Even if we give it, it just does not have very good efficacy in patients who are T790M negative uh, if it's given as a second line or later therapy. That's what the data show us. Now, with osimertinib, yes, we, we do not have a readily available EGFR-directed therapy in the second line setting, but we will continue to learn more about the options for osimertinib-acquired resistance. Uh, C-MET uh, may emerge as a valuable target to find with MET inhibitors as an active approach for patients with this detected, and it may be seen in up to 20, even 25% of patients after osimertinib. Uh, and at the same time, there's uh, another EGFR mutation, C797S, that we might detect after osimertinib that is associated with uh, efficacy activity of the first generation EGFR inhibitors for those patients, though that's a minority, and we will only know more than we do right now. In the meantime, we should remember that uh, patients who start on osimertinib now will have a median of 18, 19 months or so before we need to consider that option of what to do next, and we will know more by that time than we do now. At the same time, we should remember that before osimertinib, we managed and saw good results.
results in some patients who received chemotherapy, etc., uh, in a world that didn't have osimertinib uh, up to a couple of years ago. And chemotherapy and even potentially immunotherapy are options that we can consider for patients after osimertinib-mediated uh, uh, progression uh, that occurs in the next few years. So I would say that while it is certainly arguable to uh, favor starting with a first or second generation EGFR inhibitor just to save osimertinib, that's not my preference because of the tolerability profile, because of the overall efficacy, and the guarantee that everyone's going to get the benefit of osimertinib if you start with it, versus only a limited subset getting it later. And I would also say that intracranial control is likely to be a very important issue that we really have not paid enough attention to, but need to more in the coming years. In the meantime, though, the options in terms of targeted therapies in the setting of acquired resistance after osimertinib are currently limited. This is a very new problem that we are only introducing right now. We have years to work on this and we will only know more than we do. I would say that it's quite possible we will have new options by the time the people starting osimertinib now actually develop acquired resistance. That said, I welcome your thoughts and encourage people to add comments.